In today's video, I'm really excited to share with you five landscape photography tips which have really helped me improve my photography in 2018. Now we may all have different reasons for getting into the world of photography, but one thing that we all share in common is this great love and passion for this wonderful visual art form. For me, it all started way back when I was a child. I remember sitting on the chair in my house when I was younger, watching these wonderfully narrated documentaries by the great Sir David Attenborough. And my mind would just drift away with the possibilities of exploring these beautiful places when I was a bit older. Now this carried on this connection with nature all the way through into my adult life. And finding photography was like finding that missing jigsaw piece. I knew instantly I loved landscape photography and to get out with my camera made me happy. Over the years, I've learned many different skills and techniques which have actually really served me and helped me in my photography. This year has taught me so much about landscape photography and I'm really excited about being able to share five of these tips with you today. Tip number one is to challenge yourself. Have you ever heard of the law of familiarity? You probably have, but if you haven't, you may still have experienced it without knowing it. Think of a relationship that you got familiar with, or maybe something you bought that was new and shiny, you really wanted it, and two months later, it's catching dust on a shelf. In photography, it's really important not to fall into the trap of familiarity. It's important to keep things fresh and new, not to go through the same motions day in and day out. And one very highly recommended way of doing this is by challenging yourself. It's something that I've done on a few occasions in 2018. And one of my very favorite things I did was by going out and getting lost with my camera. It was just me, my camera, the car, and the beauty of nature around me. There was no sat navs, there was no maps, there was no technology apart from the camera. I just drove around and looked for different new compositions these were in areas that I was not familiar with. And not only did it really help me approach things that I looked for in different ways, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I grew as a photographer and I enjoyed it. I really encourage you to try tip number one. If ever you're really going through the same motions in your photography, maybe you're feeling frustrated, just challenge yourself. Go out there and try something new. Tip number two, is taking action. This is something that I really struggled with from day one of my landscape photography. We've all experienced days when the weather is far from ideal. Harsh rain, gale force winds, even things such as flat blue sunny skies. Now that might be perfect for a day at the beach, but for landscape photography, not so. Two weeks ago, I went to the beautiful Snowdonia National Park. Now this was a two day photography event. Before I went, I knew that I was gonna face some terrible weather conditions. We were gonna have torrential rain. We we're also gonna have gale force winds. And we were gonna be right in the epicenter of this. I had two choices. I could go or I could cancel it. Now I've been photographing for long enough to know that when you're in torrential rain and high winds, it's tough going as a photographer. It was very easy for me to say, imagine being at home with my feet up, enjoying a cup of warm tea. But that's exactly what I didn't do. Because one of our best tools as a photographer is using our mind. I chose to look at it from a different angle and a different perspective. And it's something we do daily as photographers. We're always trying to find the composition from a different angle and a different perspective. So I know that after breaks in the rain, you can get beautiful, vibrant rainbows which arch their way over the landscape. You can also get fantastic sun rays which burst through dramatic clouds and light up parts of your landscape. What seems like a bad situation can actually be a real gift. This is definitely one of the most valuable lessons that I've learned from 2018. It's taking action. 
It's when I can view things from a different angle or perspective, and my mind's able to capture really what I'm trying to achieve rather than what I'm trying to avoid. Tip number three is look for something new. Every day I spend hours probably looking at different pictures on sites like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and other sites. And I'm continually impressed by how many amazing photographers there are out there now. There's some incredible pictures that you guys are producing. And it's really amazing that we can share these images with each other in today's modern society. I really started to notice though that what I was paying attention to or more attention to was images that I'd never seen before or say pictures which have been taken in well-known places but someone had taken a different composition or taken it from a different angle. Now this inspired me to start trying to do something new in my own photography. So I made a decision that in 2018, this is what I was going to do. One such example I'd love to share with you guys is when I visited a very well-known place in the Peak District. And this place was called Three Shires Head. Some of you may have even been there. It's a lovely place where you've got these two beautiful little waterfalls. I've seen so many pictures taken at this place. A lot of them are wonderful, but a lot of them are the same. So when I visited there, I really wanted to capture something new, a composition which had never been captured before, or at least certainly something that I'd never seen. So when I was there, I was fortunate enough to capture this beautiful picture. I'd never seen this composition of the main bridge at the Three Shires Head before. It was something new and I was really impressed with it. So what I did is I shared it on my Instagram page and then I was shocked to find out that it had been shared on two of the main Peak District websites. This means that it had been shared to over 100,000 people. And this is all because I'd just taken a picture out of something different or something new. It also meant that it wasn't just me that was looking for these different pictures or noticing them, but it was actually other people. So not only is this a way that you can improve your photography, but it's also a great way of standing out from the rest of the photographers. Because there's so many photographers out there now, and it's wonderful for us to share our pictures, but it means there's more competition if it's something that you're trying to make a living from. Tip number four is being patient. All of the best landscape photographers out there that I've spoke to or seen their work understand this concept. There's many times that you arrive at a location and the conditions are poor, but you know that the composition could be great. This is where it really pays off handsomely to be patient. You can use weather apps and you can use knowledge of cloud formations. You can even just pay attention to the skies and then you are able to see when clouds are gonna move in and out of the way and then are going to clear so that you can get the best conditions. I've seen so many photographers when I've been out of my adventures before that have set up somewhere and I've seen it and I thought, you know, they could get a great shot from there if they're gonna wait a little bit of time, but they haven't had that patience. They've moved on and then lucky for me, I've moved in. And this is one such example which I'd like to share with you is when I was actually just on my way back from Snowdonia National Park and I saw this beautiful scene but the weather conditions were really quite awful it was raining and raining i looked at a weather app and i could see that the rain was due to stop in about an hour's time so i stood there and i waited and i hung out and then i managed to get this beautiful picture tip number five is probably the most obvious one but it's also one of the most important and this is enjoying your photography I've had some deep conversations with other photographers over the years, and they've shared with me times that they've really felt like giving up on photography. And there's a number of reasons behind this. It could be putting pressure on yourself to get the best pictures you can. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of pressure, but when you go out and you may not get the photo that you're looking to get, for you to come home and stress and put pressure on yourself after, it's only gonna make you feel worse. Now this happened to me as well, and it first happened to me at the start of 2018, when I decided to start vlogging. I went from something I really loved, 
and felt passionate about, which is landscape photography, to something which felt a bit more like spinning plates. I felt like there was so much to coordinate now with the photography gear, the video gear, doing the video, uh, scripting at the start, just so much involved that the landscape photography kind of fell to the back. I did actually feel at times like maybe I should give up vlogging, but I stuck with it. And after going through a little bit of an uncomfortable time, it now feels a lot more natural to me. But the real game changer and the thing that really decided for me that this is definitely what I want to do was when I asked myself a question. I asked myself, what was the reason I started photography? From that place, I was able to think of all of the good reasons, all of the exciting parts that got me down this path in the first place. And then from this great kind of location in my mind, this great place of thinking of all these positive things, the reasons that made me fall in love with photography in the first place, I was able to readjust my goals and change a few things so I was still able to focus on my photography and what I enjoyed. I've really enjoyed making this video for everyone today to watch. And I think for me, it's because I know that there's a lot of value in this video that if you can only apply it into your photography, it will really make a difference moving into 2019. These are five tips which I know I'm definitely gonna be using in 2019. And they're definitely the most important five tips that I've learned in my landscape photography in a long, long time. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for watching this video today. I really hope that you've all enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. And if you did enjoy it, it would mean a lot to me if you gave it a thumbs up on YouTube. Just let me know that I've done a good job. If this is your first time visiting my channel, then it would be brilliant if you could subscribe. And that means you get notified whenever I bring out new content. Whatever you do today, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll see you all again next time.